nobody's being delivered from anything. God ain't doing nothing for nobody right now. And me, I wonder why. with the beefing thing. But I'm not interested in that. Why, why are you wasting your time trying to either Angel Snuff Number 7? What is the benefit? A victim of racism is always attacking another victim. You're not even staying on topic. There are many enemies that you could be Debating and arguing with. But y'all always got to find another black face, another soul brother and sister to beef with. Because you are mentally disturbed, you are insane. You have a serious problem. And that is because you are comfortable in oppression. Because if you wasn't comfortable in your oppression, then you would understand. I don't have time to beef and talk about this brother or this sister. I need to unite against a common enemy. But you won't do that because you believe you don't need me. You don't need her. So to hell with them. I'm going to be just like my slave master and try to force my religion or political idea on a another victim. Because slave, because the slave master have forced all his crap on you, now you want to turn around and be like Masa. Look, life can change in the blink of an eye. Y'all comfortable. You eat three meals a day. Some of y'all got decent jobs, so y'all comfortable. Black power family don't make no difference. You are comfortable in your racism. Just like the Jews of the 1940s. Yeah, you comfortable just like the Jews. They doing that thing. Different kind of Jews. I'm very sure they don't get along with one another either. You should be this kind of Jew. You should be that kind of Jew. Doing the same type of Negro stuff that Negroes do right now. But then somebody was telling them. Um, there's rumors that y'all are on the hit list. Oh, that hit list of what? On the hit list for extermination. Somebody, they spreading the rumor that the Jewish people are the reason behind the problems of Germany. Ah, ain't nobody doing that. That's bull. Some, many Jews fought in World War I. Patriotic to Nazi Germany. I mean, well, before Nazi Germany. Patriotic to Germany. How could the government turn around and target us for extermination? We, we good citizens. Well, one day, the knock came on the door, rounding them all up. What's this? In the blink of a lie, it was, it was happy on one day. And the next day, they was on a train going to a concentration camp. Being put in ovens and gas chambers. Happened that quick. Some of the Jews were smart. They heard the rumor. And they got the hell out of Dodge. Some of them did. But there are many, there were many Jews. Just like the Negroes of today. That can't happen. It's impossible. I was a good, I was a good citizen. 
They was a good citizen all the way to the time their body rolled down in a mass grave. There's a mass grave waiting for the so-called Negro in America. There was a mass grave waiting for the Jewish people in Germany. Because there's a group of people who came into power that said this group of folks was the reason why we ain't living good. They are cheating us. They are exploiting us. They are a problem. Let's get rid of the problem. And the people of the country sided and joined the government and said, yeah, let's get rid of them. There's always propaganda. There's always stories in news reports to paint brothers and sisters, black people, soul brothers and sisters in this nation as savage animals, a bunch of ingrates. You don't, you don't appreciate what America has done for us, brought you out of Africa. You were swinging on trees with your tail. You were savage and the, the wonderful white man, the pink Caucasian people made you civilized. And you steady complaining and you steady wanting more. You should have been a good as a happy ass slave. That was a big advancement for being a damn savage in Africa. So whenever America has problems, and this is true, they always look at black folks as the problem. Them Negroes. They taking away our jobs. They think they're so educated. They the problem. And you are on your way to a mass grave. And the only thing we want to do is talk about I'm going to either Angel Snub number seven. And you got people planning your deaths. There's a group of people that is saying there are too many people on the earth. We need to purge some of them. We need to get rid of some of them. Who do you think going to be the first ones on the list that need to be put in a mass grave? Who do you think that's going to be? You think it's going to be their people? The ones who have the power? The ones who have the power to do this? It's going to be you and your children. Oh, it can't happen to me. It can't happen to us. I'm an American citizen. Same thing that the Jewish man, same thing that the Jewish woman said as their body rolled down to the bottom of a mass grave along with their children. You and your children and grandchildren going into a mass grave. Myself and a friend, and you know I don't, I'm not a movie critic and I don't really go to movies, but my, myself and a friend we went to see this movie called The First Purge. The First Purge. And the First Purge was the government that came up every, I don't know how, how many days it was, or once every year. They take away all, away all law for 24 hours because they need a way to to, to kill and exterminate a certain group of people and in the first purge the first purge the victims the targets was black folks and we hear the rumors all the time I'm very sure the so called black conscious community you claim that you know all this already but you're not doing a damn thing Hassan Camel is it's talking about Sanella, Sanella. It's talking about Polite, Polite. It's talking about Hassan Campbell. So Rasun said it's talking about Sanella. Young Farrell is talking about so and so. Tommy Sotomayor. Yeah, Tommy Sotomayor. Raven Simone. All of these Negroes. Jesse Lee Peterson. You will find yourself at the bottom of a mass grave. They don't give a damn about what you're talking about. You a good citizen and all that type of stuff. That ain't going to mean nothing. 
anybody with dark skin go down in the hole. Nothing is going to save you. We need to get rid of a certain group of people and you belong to that certain group of people. They don't care how, what kind of good Negro you are. And y'all, we just like the Jews. You don't take nothing serious. Keep playing games. Everything is funny. Everything is a lie. Everything is a joke. Until it, until it start to go down. You think God gonna save you. In the movie, The First Purge, these people ran to the church. Made it very easy for them to be murdered. So the people that was out killing just went to the church and just murdered them wholesale. Easy. Because they think God gonna protect them. You have been warned. We have been warned. The Jewish people were warned. It just did not happen. But they didn't. They didn't take it seriously. And so right now to this day, Jewish people, oh the Holocaust, oh woe is me. Oh. You was warned. It's just not it's not like it didn't happen. And the same thing with the Negro. Oh woe is me. I see coffins moving across the nation. Plastic coffins. I wonder who those coffins are. Who those coffins are for? You don't take nothing serious. We are reactionary. That's why it's important to get on this soul train and create a safe haven. Something that you can at least, at least have some type of a chance to survive. The Jews didn't get that chance. We have an opportunity to change the way this will, the outcome of this. But the only thing you want to do is have a YouTube beef. The only thing you want to do is get in somebody's panties and drawers, smoke weed and, and get hot. Keep doing it. And you keep talking about you love your children, your grandchildren and great grandchildren. We might. We might be able to miss this, but I guarantee you, they won't. It's waiting on them. You think Mississippi, this campaign from Mississippi is a joke? Well, all right, okay. We'll see how long you last. The Jewish people didn't take nothing serious. But I guarantee you right now, they take everything serious, never again. But, but again, according to them, six million of them paid the ultimate price. How many of us will pay that ultimate price? Morning, morning. I hope that your morning is uh, starting off in a peaceful manner because, as you know, this environment, this world that we live in, is like a jungle. Sometimes it makes me wonder. <laughs> it's a jungle. And when we forget that this environment or this world that we live in is a jungle, sometimes that can lead to a very disastrous conclusion as we see uh, from many of our people who are gunned down uh, in the streets who are gunned down even in church because we have become so naive we think that we are not at war we think that we are not living in a jungle environment we truly believe that we are living in some type of civilized situation and that is not the case and sometimes we play <laughs> we pay for that belief with our lives as always in the name of our ancestors peace forever and always and welcome to another edition 
of what I call the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here on the World Wide Web. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm. and your snub nub seven. I am your soul brother, number one. There is a uh, singer, and maybe he's not the only one. But there's a singer many of you know of as Keith Sweat. Keith Sweat is known <laughs> as a singer, but in his singing, many brothers feel as though Keith Sweat is begging women for love. Keith Sweat is begging women for love. Now, of course, you have those who are macho. They don't believe in that. I guess they believe that you're supposed to grab a sister or any female by her hair and drag her on the ground and that type of thing. <laughs> you know the, the pictures that we see from cavemen. If you're not wanting to drag her by her hair on the ground and rough her up, then what is wrong? Tell me what is wrong with a man begging a woman for her love. In nature, you see male animals go all out of their way because they want the attention, they want the love, they want the affection of a female. Male birds dress in all different types of colors and they get to dancing around the female and you see the male submit. Now men always talk about women should submit. But if you notice a lot of men. They don't mind submitting. When they trying to get the kitten. <laughs> you know what I'm saying to you. <laughs> they don't mind that type of submission. But what is wrong. With. The type of love. That. Keith Sweat is expressing. Begging a woman for her love. The brothers or the men have a problem with that because they don't wish to submit. They wish to always conquer and dominate somebody all the time. They don't want to give up none of their domination time to somebody else. However, the sisters or women, they like Keith Sweat. They like sweet key sweat and what you call begging. They don't, they don't mind that. Because women like feeling wanted. Because women like feeling desired. They like being chased. They like that. They like when you compliment them. They like when you want to make them feel good they like that and when you do that even though you submit for a certain reason and they know what you are after it's not no secret that's that's nature the females in nature know what you're after you're not you're not really tricking them you're not fooling them but it's all part of what they call the mating game and we all do our part <laughs> so that we can continue our species. The only sad thing is that we think that the human being has a little bit more honor. And you would not be playing the mating game with our sisters or any female just for pleasure. Because... She's looking at you and she has been uh, conditioned or maybe some people say that it's natural. She's looking for a lifelong partner, a, long, a lifelong soulmate. And you are just after one thing for sure. And this is where the problems in human beings begin because you cannot treat the mating game as a game. It's something that is serious. 
it is not just something for you to seek sexual gratification. And so now you look in the world that we live in, not only is it dangerous, but our whole species that we call humanity is all messed up. Because we are treating mating, we're treating love like a game. And I'm saying this just to make this point. I don't mind begging. I'm not too proud to beg when it comes to your participation in this campaign for a city and eventually the state of Mississippi. That is what is being promoted on this channel. And as far as I know, just like Brother Maurice Muhammad said, it's the, it's the only game in town. I have subscribed to at least 300, over 300 different channels. And I listen to various people and of course you have the most you have the most uh, you have the most popular but I have listened to nothing that can even compare to this campaign to take control of the state of Mississippi. I just don't. If you if you if if there is something easier to do, something that is better to do, then I'll be happy to join and get on that train and ride it. As long as it solves our problems. So uh, I'm like Keith Sweat when it comes to you. There is no shame in my game. I am begging us. Because this is the correct way to go. It is the appropriate action. Everything. Of course we don't know exactly how we're going to do it. Detail by detail. But we do know that this is the way to go. You can tell. It answers the questions that we need to be answered. It gives us purpose. It gives us goal. It gives us competence in the execution of that goal. And it gives you a, a vision of a time where we won't even exist. It answers all it passes all that criteria and guidelines. So, the message is out here now. It is no longer really a secret. This campaign to take control of a state, a city, is out here. Anybody can listen to the idea. The idea is in the public arena now. So the race is on. You may reject the call to participate in what is best for you and your children and your children's children. You may reject that. And that's your choice, brothers and sisters. I beg you, like Keith Sweat, I'm begging you to participate and begin the process and do this. But if you don't want to, you think it's a game, you think it's a joke, so be it. However, again, the uh, word is out. So you have people from South America that will hear this word. You will have the Mexican community will hear this word. The German community. And everybody in the public arena from all the various different types of people and ethnic groups, everybody can hear what the so-called Negro don't want to do. You don't want to do it. However, I'm telling you, the Mexican community in California and probably many other places have already basically conquered cities. Basically, they already have taken over many uh, small communities and, and whatever. 
So they already understand the idea. But for them to hear or elevate their game to a state level, we're not only looking at cities. How do we take a state? And so the idea that is coming from us, other people will take, like the Mexican community, the brown community, they will gather their forces, come up with a strategy based on what we have presented. They will not give us the credit, of course, but based on what we presented, and next thing you know, within the next few years, the Mexicans have taken over the state of California. And of course, when something like that is, is and have been accomplished, you're going to have other ethnic groups, other groups of people who will want to do the same thing. So you will have maybe the Germans community. They want their own state. And you will have the Chinese community, Asian community. They will want their own state. Not only state, but they want, they're going to want to take over states, plural. And what will the so-called Negro be doing? You will stay in bondage. You will stay under, always under the control of somebody. The United States will never be the same again once this began to take off. There will be no need for a federal government. Each state will probably remain in a union, but they would dismantle the federal government. There is no need for a federal government. I'm telling you what is going to happen. So you don't have to worry about the fall of America. Many people believe that the fall of America may happen because of some nuclear threat or, or, or some conquering army. That's not necessarily so. This action in and of itself will mean the fall of America just by this action. So what will happen to us? Since you don't want to do nothing, the only thing that will happen, you will make sure that your children are permanently on the bottom. Um, now, I'm very sure that uh, you heard, and I know I've heard, people talk about what is a man. I'm not going to talk about what is a woman right now. I'm going to talk about what is a man. What is manhood? We don't have manhood. We need manhood training. What, what is that about? What is a man? What is manhood training? Okay, well, well, first of all, before you can become a man, you start off, and we start off as boys. We all start off as boys, okay? Now, the the nature, the nature of boy, the nature of any immature male animal is to become an adult male. That's the ultimate goal. So the, so the nature of boy is man. The nature of boy is not homosexual or any of these other transgender. That's not the nature of boy. This is something, this is something that happens when the nature of boy, something interferes with the natural development of boy. Now look, nature, that which is natural, cannot be taught. A man or woman 
cannot teach your boy about being a man. It has to naturally be a part of you. Oh man, come on, brother. What you talking about now? It, 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 look, let me tell you something. It's natural. It's natural for a boy to want to be a man. I'm going to use myself as an example. I was raised around mostly women. Okay? There were men. My, my father, my mother was married. I could tell you came from a single mother. My mother was married. My mother was married. My mother was married. I was around my grandfather and my father and uncles and so forth. But basically, I like hanging around the women. I was around women. I was basically around women. But my nature told me I'm not a girl. I'm not trying to grow up to be a woman. But my nature also told me that the men that was around me, you don't want to be like them. That's what my nature, that's what my nature was telling me. They were not strong enough. My nature wanted me to be something stronger than the men that was around me. Thus, I raised myself. My nature guided me. There was no man to teach me nothing. So I had a sort of difficult upbringing, but I, I knew, but I know I'm not supposed to wear a dress. I'm not going to be wearing no makeup. I was not gender confused. My nature guided me that way. There was no man when I began to go through puberty and all these changes was happening to this boy. There was no man around to tell me, well, this is happening to your son and blah. I had to learn the hard way through trial and error and learn my body. But my nature, my nature guided me through all of it. There is no man they could tell me nothing. I, I know just as much as your ass did. And you say your daddy taught you this. And your uncle taught you that. My nature. By myself. Because that's because it's natural. N not, anything that is natural. You don't have to be taught. It's natural. The problem here. In 2018. Is that. The nature of the boy, the nature of the male, has been interfered with. I was very lucky. My nature was not tainted. My nature was not distorted. I was able to develop the way I should develop. A young lion don't have to be taught to be a lion by a male. But he's raised by his mother. Because it's natural. It's natural. However, when it comes to manhood, look, look at the word. Manhood. Hood. A hood over man. What do you use a hood for? To cover something. The hood of your car. To cover your engine. May he rest in peace. Trayvon Martin wore a hoodie to cover his head. It's a hood. A hood is designed to cover something. So when you talk about manhood, it's not the man that you're training because a man should know. Be a boy's nature is to be a man. I did not need a man to tell me that I should be looking out for my mother and my sisters this, this other sex. I didn't need a man to tell me that. Something naturally told me I should be watching out for my mother and my sisters and other and other weaker persons as a man. My nature told me I'm supposed to be a protector and a provider. I'm supposed to be looking out. I didn't need a man to tell me those things or read or read a holy book. I didn't need the, I didn't need that. Now, manhood is when you cover the man with a hood. Manhood is different 
from society to nation or tribes. Each tribe, each nation is different. All right? The tribe, the people determine what is the role of man in that society, that tribe, or that family. That's what determines manhood. That's what covers the man. That's what manhood is. In America, we really don't know what manhood is. We really don't know what is expected of a, of a male in American society. Because clearly, we really don't know when you have males that wear dresses and lipstick and and other stuff. <laughs> it's not natural. And maybe that's some, another reason of why so many of our young men, regardless of their race, they become gender confused because something in their nature has been disrupted. Mothers, and I do agree with some of these guys that talk about women raise these weak men. I agree. I, I really agree to a certain point because mothers babyfy. They babyfy the men, the, the young male child, and a lot of them they treat their male children like their girls. Oh man, woo. this is oh, this is another thing. In in extreme cases, that female, that mother, this is extreme cases. Sometimes that male child looks like the father, and the father is no longer in the house. She's in love with that father and wish he was. She turns to that son and makes that son like a lover. And you have heard in some cases where some of these mothers actually do fall in love with their sons in extreme cases. They try to make a lover or they view their son as, as, a, as the father, that the child looks like the father. And that child, she wants that child to give her the love that the father did not give her. And thus making that male child sick. And then some of us, some of these male children are molested by other males, of course. This disrupts the nature of that child. Some of these male children are born with a chemical imbalance in the brain. Probably from from drinking Similac milk, the brain is not developed properly. I was a breastfed baby, and uh, came from an environment that was not as poisonous as it is today. A lot of our male children and girls, from your very inception, the sperm is bad, and the egg is bad. So. When the nature of girl, when the nature of boy to be a man, the nature of girl to be a woman, when that's disrupted, then it creates homosexual behavior. That is unnatural. But that is a consequence, that is a result from a nature being disrupted. It is not natural for a dog to walk on his hind legs. Because his nature, he's been trained. His nature has been altered to walk like a human being. That's not what dogs are supposed to do. So this male child, his mentality has been disrupted. Now, when I was growing up, I thought that I might have I might be a homosexual. Because I felt more. You know, I was more I felt more comfortable being around men, males. And the reason why I felt like that is because I was hearing these images on TV and out, of course out in society about this homosexual thing. And because I was shy, I thought I was homosexual. But see, look, my nature told me I wasn't because I was the, the soul sisters 
all that booty y'all got and all that stuff. I said, well, I, I, I know I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't be, but some of us, we go that way because we are bombarded by homosexual images and things that are unnatural. And we are not made out of good material to begin with. The brain does not, was, did not form the way it should be. Because, it, because your nature would tell you if you are a male that you're not supposed to be acting and behaving in that manner. Something happened to you. It's not your fault. Something disrupted your nature. It is not natural for a boy to believe that he's gay. It's, that's not natural. Something happened somewhere. The boy's nature is to be a man, not to be a freak. And a freak is just a, is an abnormality of nature. Something outside of nature. That's why they used to say, the freaks come out at night. And if you wanted to get freaky, some of these guys, they wanted to be freaky. They know their wife or girlfriend wouldn't do it. So they'll go and find them a freak. She'll do something outside of what sex is supposed to be. That would make her a freak. But now, most of y'all is freaky. Most of y'all is freaky deaky. Now it's normal. It's normal behavior. Wow. <laughs>
to a junior. It even began before then. But I have been a victim of a bully, of bullying. My best friend was a bully. That's a shame. I should have left that person alone, but I guess I just had to have a friend. He was a bully. And then I had to deal with this bully going back and forth to school. In fact, I was bullied so uh, much that I flunked my sophomore year in high school because I was getting so bullied and I started uh, to stay away from school because I got tired and could not stand the ridicule and the physical things that this bully was doing towards me. But you know, <laughs> it got to the point I was like Popeye the sailor. It got to the point where I said, I stood all I can stand. I can't stand no more. So I decided to fight back. And that was the end of that. That's a long story in, in and of itself. But it had to come to a head. I figured I'm getting beat up anyway. So what do I have to lose? The reason why I did not face the bully was because of fear. Fear of hurt. Fear of pain and baby fear of death. But it got to the point where I did not and no longer gave a damn. And I put that bully in check. It had to come to a head. Either it's you or me. You're going to leave me the hell alone. So in a nutshell, what are you saying? There's a reason in America why you have school shootings. Oh, there's something wrong with the mentality of the shooter. He's mentally ill or so forth. Bullying is a problem in America. Why is this? It is because this nation itself, and I am so ashamed to be considered an American citizen because I live in a nation that is nothing but a big bully just like the person that was bullying me. Always picking on the weak. Always picking on the helpless. The powerless. That's what this nation does. So in your children, why are you shocked that there are school shootings because I can have a gun and I know that the people I'm going to shoot are powerless and helpless. They don't have nothing. That's the same thing that America has done for over 200 years. Do the same kind of stuff. North Korea, small country. Cuba, small island. Iran, Iraq, small nations. Bully. How would a 20, 21 year old Caucasian boy why would he target black people, soul brothers and sisters, for extermination? Dylan Roof. Why would he do that? 21 years old. Because this nation, from its very inception, is a bully and a damn racist. That's why. That's the reason why. And it's permeated within the society. Of course, many of you would say, there are many good white people. And I'm very sure there are many of you Caucasian people and y'all subscribe to my channel and everything. This is true. However, the, the vast majority have been conditioned and it is acceptable to be a damn bully. All over this country, children are committing suicide regardless of race due to bullying. But that's the atmosphere and that's the mentality of the nation itself. A bully. Troublemaker. Liars and deceivers. That's this nation, whether you like it or not. Murderers. The world's most expensive assassination, Muammar Gaddafi. This nation tried to kill him back in the 80s. And they finally succeeded with help from their allies. 
of other people who are murderers and bullies. So after the death of Muammar Gaddafi, you don't hear America or nobody talk about Libya. And let us, what kind of condition do we find Libya right now? But we're doing it for the people. The people are under stress. Well, how are they living right now? How is Iraq living without Saddam Hussein? And all these people who this nation murdered, justified murder, according to you. Always in people business, all over the earth, trying to tell people what they should and should not do, how they should believe, how they should run their lives. Caucasian people, you have become so, well not become, you are sick. Can't you see that you are mentally disturbed? 300 years of slavery, it became a way of life. You think people work in the minimum wage for nothing, that's all right for you. It's a good thing, it's acceptable. People barely able to make their Pay their bills, living from paycheck to paycheck. In America, it's all right. How can you, how can you sleep at night knowing another citizen can barely survive? Homeless on the street. And y'all don't care. You go on vacation to Europe and, and wherever. You don't care. Always in other people's business. Troublemakers. You can't even make a YouTube video. And here come the Caucasian people. Flagging and calling people niggas and all this kind of stuff. Even Google destroyed 100 of my channels. I took them to court. They say, I, they say I'm the one teaching hate speech. The Caucasian lady judge did not find that was true. So why did Google terminate my channel if I was not if I was not guilty of hate speech? Because you're troublemakers, you bullies. I'm a little guy. I don't like what you say. I'm gonna flag and take down your stuff. Bullies, and then you go to court and you lie. Hate speech. Liars. You want everybody to be like you. Who the hell want to be like America? A bunch of drug addicted. Folks, gender confused. You don't know whether you male or female. Child molesters. Drunkers and all kinds of wacky freak behavior. Who the hell want to be like America? Bunch of racists. We know exactly how you are. You give hundreds of thousands of dollars to George Zimmerman for shooting a black boy, a teenager, a boy. And you come up with all these excuses to justify. You just want to see a Negro dead. Can't you see you? Y'all mentality is sick. There's some guy that come on my post from, from England. Actually sit here and justify all this evil. All this mentally disturbed behavior. And justify it. You always justify in everything that you do. Darrell Wilson, shut that shot that boy in the street of Ferguson make him a millionaire give him thousands of dollars all these killers of soul brothers and sisters y'all give him and support these people and there's very few who would stand and say that's wrong just like during slavery a very small minute handful of Caucasian people the vast majority supported it if it was not for the Civil War, slavery would still be in effect. But let me tell you something, see? Let me tell you something. Pretty soon, not only me, but the whole Earth is going to get sick and tired of you. Yeah, you got nuclear weapons. Matter of fact, you're so childish. If you don't do it my way, I'll destroy the Earth ten times over. That's your threat. I will destroy humanity. That's the Caucasian person's, people's threat to the whole world. I'll just destroy the earth. Can't have it my way. That's your sick mentality. But let me tell you something. Your day is coming 
Because people around the world are scared of you. And you know it. With your nuclear weapons. And you can take food from people's mouths. You big ass bully. And the children reflect exactly what this country is. Liars and bullies and cheaters and freaks. Freaks of nature. Destroyer, destroyers of the earth. You hunt for fun. You don't hunt because you need something to eat. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill a deer. I'm going to kill a squirrel just for fun. I'm going to kill this turkey just so I can see it die. Your day is coming. So this is a warning. Because pretty soon the people of this planet are going to rise up and take your ass out. And that's going to be a fact. They're not going to care about dying. And being afraid. It's going to come to a head. And I'm telling you. If you wish your race to survive. Y'all better straighten your, your evil folks up. The ones that's causing all the problems. Y'all so called good white folks. You need to open up your mouth. You need to put these suckers in check. Because. The people of the earth. Going to get to a point just like I did with my bully. I have stood all I can stand. I can't stand no more. You are at the root of all the problems of this of this earth. Even the animals, the fish of the sea, the mammals on the land, turtles, whatever, can't have no peace because of y'all ass messing with everything. Even in the microscopic world. So I'm telling you, you may not want to listen to this Negro, but I'm telling you, What's on down the pipeline? It has got to stop. It's got to come to an end. It's got to come to a head. Ain't nobody going to going to continue to tolerate being bullied. And you wouldn't do it yourself. Don't tread on me. Remember you told that to England? Jot down your comments, y'all. Let's talk about it. Peace.